Hey, 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 hey. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Who have we got out there? Who's online? What is happening, guys? How you doing? Are you good? Are you all right? Uh, how has your week been this week? Uh, did you hit your goals? Did you achieve what you wanted to achieve? I hope you have. I hope you're rocking it. I hope you're happy. I hope you're satisfied. I hope you, you know, loving it, etc. Uh, hey, Linda. Uh, hey, Boniface. Hey, everybody, guys. Uh, feel free to share this uh, broadcast. I believe that um, on this call we're going to have some aha moments. I believe that we're going to have some uh, some paradigm shifts. I believe we're going to have some rocking stuff right so hey Irina hey Victoria hey Wendy hey Annie uh, hey Adriana um, guys uh, feel free to share this broadcast trust me this is going to be very very useful for uh, for everybody that you know uh, this is going to be a, a very very mind shifting um, uh, Facebook live uh, you know for those uh, people who you know, actually for everybody to do with money, trust me, right? So you want to make sure that you share this with people because it's definitely going to be benefit them. Uh, so feel free to swipe or hit share or tag people in the comments, whatever you do. Thanks, Linda. I can see that you shared already. Fantastic. Okay. So what we're going to do, um, you know, like I said, you know, I want to just, just get as many people on this as possible. So if you can go ahead and share this with your fans, uh, you know, trust me, they're going to get some value from this. Uh, okay. So we're going to talk about money. Now, money, just the word money, uh, people, you know, it, it can cause certain emotions in, in many people, right? For some of you, it causes positive emotions for, um, uh, I'll probably much more, uh, uh, much bigger part of you, it causes some negative feelings, some negative emotions, right? So we're going to work on them today and we're going to talk about money and what does it mean to you and, and how you can have more of it, right? If you'd like to have more of it, say yes in the comments. So if you'd like to have more money uh, in your life, just say yes and, and I'll make sure that you do get more money uh, by the end of this call. Okay, so... Uh, when it comes to money, uh, you know, a lot of people struggle with money. A lot of people don't have enough of it. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of pain. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I can see some yeses. Good, 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 good. Um, now, a lot of people have some, some wrong or, or maybe erroneous feelings about money. And that's why, or thoughts about money, and that's why don't, they don't get enough of it or they don't get as much as they would like to. So uh, I'm going to touch a few things and hopefully these will click with you and these will cause some paradigm shift in your head where you will go, I never thought about it that way. So hopefully you're going to get some aha moments by the end of this uh, live. Okay, so first thing, uh, I want to talk about people who say, oh, I see a lot of yeses. Um, I want to talk about people who say, Money is not just, it's not that important to me, right? I'm not that bothered about money, you know. Money is not important to me. Now, firstly, if somebody says to me, money is not important to me, I say to them, you're broke, aren't you? <laughs> and they go, how do you know, right? And, you know, I go, mm, well, uh, the, the next thing, 50 quid for that, you know. <laughs> just kidding, right? But uh, people who say money is not important, they haven't got any, right? Now, let me tell you why. Now, imagine if you said uh, my wife or my husband is just not that important to me. <laughs> How long do you think they will be around? How long would they hang around if you kept saying, nah, they're just not important to me, right? My wife is not important to me or my husband, not important to me, right? <laughs> do you think they would hang around for a long time? Probably not. <laughs> so why would money hang around you if you keep saying, it's not important to me, right? <laughs> right? So that's one, right? Number two, right? If you said, um, if, if having a motorbike, right? Having a motorbike, if that wasn't important to you, would you buy one? <laughs> or if having a pet parrot wouldn't be important, like you, you did, it wasn't important for you to have a pet parrot, would you go and buy one? <laughs> Probably not. So why would you get money if it's not important to you to get it? <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's first of all, it's the mindset, right? 
If you think that money is not important, then guess what? You ain't going to have any. Trust me. <laughs> right? I've heard one person, a billionaire. The person is a billionaire, right? Not a millionaire. It's with the B, a billionaire. And he said that money, you have to treat money like a woman, right? You have to be gentle with it. You have to treat it nice. You have to pay attention to it. You have to really, really look after it if you want it to be happy and if you want it to stay with you, right? And vice versa, like with the guy too, right? You have to, you know, stroke the guy and be, be nice to him, etc. Right? Otherwise, he'll be gone, right? So that's how you have to treat money. You have to change your attitude towards money. You have to treat it nicely, right? You have to, it has to be important to you. You have to like it because it is important, right? Like especially in our world, money is pretty important, right? I used to love how Zig Ziglar used to say, money is not the most important thing in the world, but it ranks up there with oxygen. <laughs> so it is pretty important to have money. I, and you most of the time, you know it's important when you don't have any, right? So that's number one. How do you treat money? How do you look at it? Is it important to you, right? Number two is your money blueprint, right? Each and every individual, all of you watching this live broadcast, you have your money blueprint, right? Now, let me tell you what is a money blueprint. Money blueprint is a certain level at which your mindset is now at where you feel that where you're supposed to be financially. It's like a better uh, um, example for that is a thermostat, right? Is a thermostat. So if a room's thermostat is set to, let's say, 20 degrees, um, as soon as the temperature starts going up and maybe we, we're having a training there and the temperature starts going up, guess what happens? The air conditioning kicks on and brings the temperature right down to 20 degrees. But guess what? If we open the window and it starts getting a bit chilly there, it's, the temperature starts dropping to 18 and 16, guess what's going to happen? The heaters will kick in and they will raise the room temperature again back to 20 degrees because the thermostat determines the temperature in the room. Well, exactly the same way is your financial thermostat, your money blueprint, right? So if your financial thermostat is set to hundreds, then as soon as you have more money in your account than hundreds, guess what you do? You start spending it. <laughs> you get rid of it, right? So that it comes down to where it's supposed to be. If your thermostat is set to thousands and you don't have enough, then you go to work and you work hard to bring the money back up to where it's where your financial thermostat is, right? So in order for you, if you right now not where you want to be financially, if you don't have enough money that you want to have, that means you need to raise your financial thermostat. You need to change your money blueprint to where you will allow more money to come into your life. You will be uh, forced maybe to work more and earn more because you raised your financial thermostat, right? So that's where you are. You know, if you're not making enough money, there might be the reason that your financial thermostat is too low. Some people's financial thermostat is zero, right? They, sh they don't want to have any money, right? So what happens as soon as they get any, they spend it, right? <laughs> they, they, they sabotage themselves and they, they lose the money in whatever way or, uh, or another. Good example for that is when people win a lottery. Because their financial thermostat is way, way, way down because all of their life they've never had any money. They win a million pounds or dollars or whatever in the lottery. And guess what happens? Within a year or so, the money is gone. They've spent it. They wasted it. They lost it, etc. And they're back to where their financial thermostat was in the first place, right? And they just basically there. Now, don't worry. I'm going to show you and tell you how you can increase your money blueprint, how you can increase your financial thermostat. So this way, you can actually start making more money and have more money in your life, right? So that's also very, very important, right? And um, it's really uh, important to understand how you're playing the money game. You see, most people play the money game not to lose, right? They play it on the defense. But rich people play the money game to win, right? Now, guess what? If you're playing not to lose, if your money game is about not losing it, then guess what it happens? Think about any sport, football, baseball, basketball, cricket, or whatever. If you play any sport only on defense, what is the chance of you winning that game? Not a very big chance, is it, right? 
because you're basically just defending yourself. You're not attacking. But that's how most people play the money game, right? They just go, oh, if I can only pay my bills, if I can only get by, that'll be fine, right? But if you're trying just to get by, guess what? You're never going to get ahead. You will never get rich. You will never have loads of money in your bank account because you're just playing on the defense, right? You're not going out there. You're not on the offense. You're not chasing the money. You're not chasing the opportunities that could make the money to you for you, right? So then you're always going to stay where you are, right? You cannot win the game of money if you're playing on the defense, right? I hope this is making sense. If this is making sense, type some yeses. If you've got some aha moments already, put some ahas. <laughs> okay. Also, what you must understand that what you focus on expands. It's a universal law. It says what you focus on expands. So guess what? If you want to get ahead in the money game, if you want to get ahead in life, there is three things that you absolutely must stop doing. And those three things are complaining, justifying, and blaming, right? Poor people do that. Poor people complain, justify, and blame all the time, right? You no, know, what is complaining? complaining? Complaining is basically thinking about all the bad things that are happening in your life, about all the crap, right? And we just said a moment ago, what you focus on expands, which means what you focus on, you get more of it. So if you focus on crap in your life, guess what you're going to get more of? <laughs> you're going to get more crap, right? So in essence, you become a giant crap magnet <laughs> if you are complaining, blaming, and justifying, right? People who are winning in the game of life, people who are winning in a game of money, they don't complain. They don't justify and they don't blame because they know that they are in charge and they are responsible, right? So whatever results right now you're having is just a result of what you've been doing it so far, right? You see, money, lack of money is not a problem. Lack of money is never the problem. Lack of money is the effect of what you've been doing so far. So you know life is about cause and effect. About you do something and you get a reaction on that, right? So lack of money is not a cause. It is an effect of you doing something or maybe not doing something, right? So if you don't have money right now, that's not the problem. It is, a, it, it is a symptom, right, of a disease, right? It's the outcome of the disease. But you need to fix the disease. You need to fix what is causing the lack of money, right? And we'll talk about that. So first of all, what is your goal? You need to identify what is your goal, right? Because guess what poor people's goal is? Poor people's goal is the survival, is the security, right? So their goal is if only I can pay my rent this month and if only I can cover my gas and electricity bill and if only I can have enough money to put the, the petrol in a car, I'll be okay, right? I'm on a survival mode, right? And guess what? If you're on a survival mode, you know, there's no way you're ever going to get rich, right? Because you will stay in a survival mode because that's your goal. Your goal is to survive this month, right? And maybe survive next month if you're lucky, right? So then that's where you're going to stay, right? You're going to stay in the survival mode all the time. Now, middle class, their goal is to become comfortable. You hear it so often. You know, if only I can get comfortable to where, you know, my bills are paid. I've got a little bit of money left over to go to a restaurant and do this, that, and the other. If only I can be comfortable, right? And if your goal is to be comfortable, guess what you're going to get? You're going to be comfortable. But you will never get rich being comfortable. You will never get wealthy if your goal is to be comfortable. Because guess where the wealth is? Guess where the riches are? They are outside your comfort zone, guys, right? So if your goal is to be comfortable, you'll never be rich. But if your goal is to be rich, then at very least, you'll be very comfortable. Are you getting this? Give me some ahas. Give me some yes, right? Show me some love. I can see some thumbs up going up. I like that, right? Give me some hearts if you're getting this, right? So how can you break through? How can you make more money, right? Well, actually, making money, it's all about serving people. It's all about solving problems, right? You have to become a professional problem solver. The more problems you solve for more, for more people, the more money you're going to make. So I give you an example of a goal. It's a good goal for you to set right away. 
your goal should be to help 10 times more people than you're helping right now. So if on your team right now, you have 200 people, set a goal to get 2,000 people on your team. If right now on your team, there is 2,000 people, set a goal to get 20,000 people on your team. If right now on your team, you have 30,000 people, set a goal to get 300,000 people in your team. Guess what? If you helped 10 times more people, if you delivered value to 10 times more people, if you solved problems for 10 times more people than you sold right now, do you think you could make some more money? Right? Do you? Right? Let me know. Do you think you could make some money? I think you could, right? And that's really what your goal should be. Your goal should be to help as many people as possible. 10 times, right? Stop thinking small. Start thinking huge. Start thinking so big that it scares even you to think about it that big. But make that goal anyway. If you shoot for the stars, at least you land on the moon. But if your goal is to be on a survival mode, just to, you know, carry on, you know, just hang on for another year, right? Then you're going to be there, right? It ain't going to happen. You're not going to be wealthy. You're not going to get rich, right? So it's really important. So uh, say after me, my goal is to become multi-millionaire and more and nothing less will do. My goal is to become a multi-millionaire and more and nothing else will do. My goal is to become a multimillionaire and more and nothing less will do. Now, why am I adding that nothing less will do? Because in life, you get what you settle for. You get what you settle for. So the marriage you have right now is the marriage that you settled for. The relationships you have in life is the relationships that you've settled for. The house you're living in right now is the house that you settled for. The money you are making right now is what you settled for, right? If you go to, for a job interview and the person who's interviewing you says, so what are your salary expectations? And you go 250,000 pounds a year. And they go, what? This job only pays 30,000 pounds a year. And you go, all right, get me another job. <laughs> right? If you don't settle for something and you search until you find something that pays you 250,000 pounds a year or 300,000 or 100,000, whatever it is, right? You don't settle for anything less, right? Because if you settle, that's what you're going to get for the rest of your life. But if you're not settling for that, if you keep looking, if you keep searching, if you keep chasing it, guess what? You'll get it eventually you're gonna get it, right? <laughs> Is this making sense? Does this make sense, right? I hope it's making sense. I hope you're still on this, right? <laughs> okay, so you see the poor and the middle class, they have the mentality of either or. They say you can either be rich or loving to people. You can either be rich or have good time with your family. You can either be wealthy or have time freedom. You can either be rich or, you know, uh, spend time with your children. You can either be rich or be a kind person, right? They have this duality, right? And guess what? If you think that you can either be rich or you can have a good family life, what are you going to do? You're not going to get rich because you're going to choose, obviously, the right thing, the family life, right? But rich people think both. Poor people think either or. Rich people think both that you can be rich and have amazing family life. You can be rich and very generous and contribute to causes and contribute to charities and help the churches and go to Africa and build orphanages and whatnot, right? You can do both. It's you just making up stuff in your head or you've been conditioned by other people or you know parents or religion or school or whatever to thinking that it's all bad, etc. right? And if you think that it's all bad, guess what? It's bad, right? It's bad. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second, right? So you have to understand that you have to change your mentality towards money, right? You see, if you see money, uh, anything to do with money as bad, you're never going to have it, right? So one thing that I'd like to teach you and, and, and wish you do is start loving rich people. Start 
adoring rich people. Start respecting rich people. Start blessing rich people. Because guess what most people do? They are jealous about rich people. They hate rich people. They despise rich people. They uh, say all the bad things about rich people, right? And guess what? If you have negative thoughts towards rich people, what do you think is the chance of you ever becoming rich? <laughs> there is no chance in hell that you will ever become rich if you hate rich people, if you despise rich people, if you, even if you are jealous of rich people. Because in your subconscious mind, then you will think, if I become rich, other people will be jealous of me. If I become rich, other people will despise me. If I become rich, others will hate me, right? So I don't want to be rich because that's all the bad stuff, isn't it? <laughs> right? And that's then the end of it, right? There's no way on earth you can get rich if you have negative stuff associated with other people who are rich. So you need to start blessing rich people. You need to start uh, modeling rich people. You need to start admiring rich people and learning from them. Only this way you can become rich, right? I love Huna philosophy. Huna philosophy comes from Hawaii, right? And in Huna, it says, bless that which you want. You want good health? Bless people with good health. You want good relationships? Bless others with good relationships. You want wealth, money, and riches? Bless all the people who are wealthy and rich and doing well. Next time you see somebody getting off a limousine or getting off a Lamborghini or getting off a Ferrari, come up to them, shake their hand, and say, thank you. Thank you for being an amazing role model for me to follow, for me to copy. Next time you see a leader in your business who's making 10 times more money than you do, don't be jealous about them. Don't despise them because of that. Rather, come up to them, shake their hand and say, thank you for making all of that money because you now showing to me that it is possible. You are being role model to me and helping me to go for the same thing, right? You know, I don't know how many of you heard of Roger Bannister. He was the first person in the world to run a four-minute mile. Before him, people said that it was impossible, that human being would die if, if he did that. They said that the muscles would get off the ligaments and they would tear apart if a human being ran that fast, right? <laughs> they fantasized all of these things. Then guess what? Roger Bannister went on and did the bloody thing. He ran the four-minute mile. And as soon as he done that, within the next month, a bunch of people did it. <laughs> they ran even faster than him, right? Why? Because now they saw that it is possible, right? So bless people who are making millions and billions and people who are making all of that money because they are showing you what is possible. They say first people who started, they need faith. They have to have faith that this is going to work out for me, that I'm going to make it. You, you don't need to have faith. Because people already done it, right? They already done it. So you don't need faith. You just need to go and do it. Go and model them. And the fastest way to achieving anything in life is to model people who already done it. Speak the way they speak. Do the things they do. Walk the way they walk. Do what, everything that they do. And you'll have the same results. You want good health? Do what healthy people do. You want good relationships? Do what people with great relationships do. You want a lot of money? Stop listening to your broke friends. <laughs> Start doing what rich people do, right? Start doing what successful people do and you'll get those results. By the way, guys, I'm loving all the stuff. I, I can see all the thumbs up going up. So really, I appreciate that, guys. I can see that. I can see that, right? So one thing that you have to uh, understand that, you know, you're never going to get away from problems. Problems going to happen, you want it or not. Every single person has problems. The only people who don't have problems are dead. <laughs> That's the only time when you don't have any problems. You know, you're done fully. <laughs> but until you're there, you're going to have problems, right? So you have to understand that you have to figure out a way to overcome your problems. And you see, the only way to overcome your problems is to outgrow them. Outgrow them, right? What do I mean by that? 
You see, if you are a level three person and you get a level five problem, guess what? That problem is huge, right? You're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? This is the end of the world, all my days, right? But guess what? If you grow yourself as a person and you become a level 10 person and you get a level five problem, you don't even see it as a problem, just something to take care of, something to get sorted out, right? So the problems are still going to be there, but you have to outgrow them, right? And this way, then you're not worried. You know, these things will happen because it's same with the three deadly things, right? Fear, doubt, and worry, right? People are afraid. People, you know, doubt themselves. People worrying about all of this stuff, right? And guess what? Poor people think that rich people don't have fear. They think that successful people in business and in other areas of life, they don't have fear. They're just like cyborgs. They're like robots. They just attack things, right? And they don't have any fear. They don't have any doubts. They don't have any worries. That is not true. Every rich person, every successful person, they have the same fears that you have. They have the same worries that you have. And they have the same doubts that you have. You know what's the difference? They don't let these things stop them. They don't let these things paralyze them, right? They act in spite of fear, right? That's why you have to tame the cobra of fear. You have to tame the cobra of fear, right? Not kill the cobra of fear, <laughs> not strangle it to death, right? You can't do that, right? You cannot get rid of fear. It's always going to be part of you, but you can tame it. You can get to a place where you feel that I can do it even if I'm afraid. I can do it even if I'm worried about it. I can do it even if I have some doubts in my head, but you just don't allow it to take control, right? Your brain is just a part of your body, right? But most people allow their brain to be the whole thing, right? Imagine if you had a hand like your brain who was scattered all over the place. It was beating you up all the time <laughs> and it was yapping all the time. Yap, 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 yap. You go in a shower, yap, 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 yap. You go in a car, yap, 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 yap. What would you do? <laughs> what would you do if you had a hand like that? Type in the comments, what would you do if you had a hand like that? I want to see some 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 opinions what would you do with a hand like that if you had it yapping yapping yada 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 all the time right like your like your mind does right yada 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 what would you do with a hand like that right what would you do with it let me know what let me know what would you do with that hand type in the comments let me know what you do with that hand all right get rid of it cut it off oh my gosh guys <laughs> You, you are too cruel to your hand. No, no, no. You don't get rid of it. You don't get rid of it. You learn to control it. That's what you need to do with your mind, right? It, it will keep yapping. It will keep saying stuff. It will keep doubting itself. But you have to learn to tame it. You have to learn to control it. And even when you're thinking, okay, I need to do this thing. This thing could help me to achieve the next level. Or this thing could help me to break through. And your mind starts going, yeah, no, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to screw yourself up. You're going to lose. Whatever. You have to go shut up, right? I'm doing it, right? I'm doing it anyway, right? In spite of you yapping in my head, etc. right? <laughs> right? You have to control it. You have to control your mind, right? You have to control your mind. So that's the only way around it, right? There's no other way. You have to learn how to control your mind, right? So once you learn how to control it, then you can change it, right? Then you can change it, right? So, you know, I keep hearing people saying things like, oh, I'm just not good with money. And I go, that's your reason? That's your reason for staying broke? I'm just not good with money? Well, guess what? I'm just not good with piano. But if I wanted to play a piano for my birthday, what would I do? I go and learn how to play a piano, right? What if I'm just not good at driving a car? I go and learn the car. Nobody was born doing money. Nobody was born awesome at finances, right? Exactly the same way how nobody was born riding a bike, driving a car, using a mobile phone or computer, right? They have learned it, right? So if you're just not good with money, guess what you need to do? Learn how to get good with money, right? Mm, what a revelation. What an interesting concept, right? Learning new skills. That's right, Linda, right? We need to learn. That's right, Katini, right? 
So that's what we need to do. Now, how can you learn it, right? Well, you can grow yourself and invest. I'm going to get to learning, right? But there are things you can do. For example, start learning and investing in yourself, right? For example, reading this book, The Richest Man in Babylon. If you haven't read this book, this thing, you can read it in an evening. If you haven't read this book, read it. It will rock your world. If you don't know how to handle money, read this book. It will teach you some 3,000-year-old principles that apply today and it will apply in the next 3,000 years, right? You need to learn that stuff, right? You need to start educating yourself. Listen to this stuff or read this stuff. Tony Robbins, Money Master the Game, right? Listen to it or read it, right? There's a book, there's audio CDs, etc. Learn, right? The guy teaches you everything you need to know about managing money, right? Listen to a guy called Dave Ramsey, right? Or read his books, right? All of them teach similar things, strategies, you know, jar system, envelope system, whatever system, right? But a way that you can learn to manage your money, right? Listen or, you know, read a book from Tihav Eka, you know, Millionaire Mind and a bunch of other books he wrote about money, right? So you're not going to get good at it until you start learning it, right? Nobody's going to, you know, your broke brother-in-law is not going to teach you how to do money, you know, and your other broke friends are not going to teach you how to deal with money, right? Rich people can teach you. So learn from rich people, right? Start investing in yourself, right? Because you are the container. Look at yourself that like you are the container, right? So if you are a very small container, so then there's only a limited amount of money that can go into this container. Anything extra will have to disappear, right? It'll have to be spent, lost, or whatever other ways you'll make it disappear, right? But if you grow yourself as a container, if you invest in yourself, if you educate yourself, if you go through personal development, you listen about money and how to manage it well, etc., and you become a huge container, now guess what? The universe hates vacuum. The universe hates empty space. So when you become a huge container, the universe will have to fill it in with money, right? And that's what you want, isn't it, right? You can have plenty of it if you just grow yourself. Because if you are full, that's it. There's no way to put more in there, right? But if you grow yourself, now you can have more money, right? Because now you're educating yourself, you're expanding yourself, right? Now you can have more of it, right? You can expand this container into earning more money, right? Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. I hope you will be able to relate. How are you getting on so far? Is this valuable? Is this useful? Have you got any aha moments so far? Have you got any, you know, things that changed your mindset just a little bit about money so far? Type in the comments. Let me know. Let me know. I love all the hearts and all the thumbs up coming up. Okay. So I'll give you this example and hopefully this will really solidify it in your head. So imagine you're with a small child, right? And you go in an ice cream shop with a small child and and you come to the counter, right? And you order one scoop of ice cream in the thing, right? So you order that, they put the ice cream, they give it to the small child and you're both walking through the door of the ice cream shop and they go plop and it drops the thing on the floor, right? (laughs) As they do, right? Now, because you're a caring adult and you really love this child, right? You turn around, go, okay, let's go back and get another one, right? And as you approach the counter, the child sees the poster on the wall with the mega free scoops, right? And goes, hey, I want this one. (laughs) Now, would you get the child the free scoops? Well, of course not. Why would you get them free scoops if they couldn't even handle one scoop, right? <laughs> right? Why would you set them up for failure? You wouldn't do that, right? You would get them one scoop, right? Because they can barely manage that. So if you get them free, it's just going to be all over the place, right? Well, universe is the same way. Universe don't want you to lose. Universe doesn't want you to mess up, right? So it gives you something and if you can't manage what you have already, and you give it, I want more, I want more. And the universe is going, look, I gave you some. And you're dripping it all over the floor. You can't manage it. You can't use it properly. Why would I give you more? 
<laughs> right? So a lot of you are walking around with two scoops and you're dripping all over the place, right? And you don't know where the money goes and all of that. We should let you run the country then, right? You like the government, right? <laughs> Right? So you have to grow yourself. You have to get better with the money you already have, right? You have to learn that stuff, right? Whether it's a jar system or the envelope system or whatever the heck system, but you have to learn how to handle even the little money you have right now, right? And once you learn how to handle that, then the universe can give you more. Once you learn how to handle that, the universe can give you even more, right? Right? Does this make sense, right? Does that give you a better understanding why you are broke? <laughs> or maybe you're not broke. I'm, I'm sure that none of you guys who are listening to this live broadcast are broke, right? You're already stinking rich. Right? <laughs> okay, so the only game here is to play to win, right? You have to play the game to win, you have to grow yourself. And the only time you can grow is when you are outside of your comfort zone, when you're outside of what you're used to, right? When you're learning new information, right? If you don't learn anything new, then you'll stay the same. So start investing in yourself, start investing in your financial education, understand how to handle the money you're getting right now, then understand how to get passive income in your life, where you do something and you get paid forever. So you don't have to go to work every single day. Understand how to invest the money that you start making. Understand these things and learn and educate yourself. If you're not sure about it, talk to somebody, talk to me. You know, If you don't know where to get more money, if you don't know how you can get more passive income in your life, if you don't know how, whatever, right? Talk to somebody. Talk, read some books, right? attend some courses, listen to some seminars, but do something to change it, right? Do something to change the situation because otherwise you'll be with that one scoop for the rest of your life, right? And we see many people who are, they live all of their life and they still with that one scoop because when life wants to teach you a lesson, it will keep bringing you around to the same place all of your life until you've learned the lesson. It will not release you. It will not let you go to the next stage, to the next level until you've learned the lesson, right? So if you're not learning the lesson, you will stay where you are today. Okay, guys, this I think is it with my talk about money. I hope you got value from this. I hope you got some insights from this. I hope <laughs> you got some uh, good ideas from this. Yes, Loretta. It is one of my favorite topics. I like talking about money and educating people about money. Thank you very much for joining, guys. I appreciate all the love. I appreciate all of your hearts. I appreciate all the thumbs up and all the comments and all of you who shared this with other people. You are superstars, guys. I love you loads. I'll see you at the top.